CWI prep course, weld inspection, module 10, part one. Learning objectives. In this module, we're gonna to touch on the introduction into non-destructive testing, dimensional defects, structural discontinuities, and non-destructive examination. Learning objectives. What you will learn from module 10. Um, we're gonna hit the introduction, then we're gonna talk about visual inspection, non-destructive testing, NDT, um, penetrant testing, mag particle testing, radiographic testing, ultrasonic testing, eddy current testing, NDE symbols, and then summary, and then we'll hit key terms and definitions. Significance of weld inspection. Just to remind everybody, not that you need reminding every time, but just to kind of beat it into your heads, the significance of weld inspection and the weld inspector's greater responsibility to the public at large. You can see from this um, picture why weld inspection is important. NDE, visual. So just keep this in mind that these things do happen. This was, I think, during World War II when they were building a lot of Liberty ships, and I think there's been a lot of advancements made in metallurgy and welding since then. But still, you need to realize that bad things can happen to welds and it's our responsibility to try and minimize the bad things that can happen due to welding. A component is only as good as its weld. If the weld is not sound and it is subject to cracking under normal wear and use, then the material that has been welded is of no use. Non-destructive tests ensure that the welds, castings, forgings, and components are of good quality. When tests are specified, the specifications or standards will outline in detail, one, which part is to be inspected, two, the testing procedure that must be used, three, the extent of the part that will be inspected, four, the qualifications of the persons making the test, five, the qualifications of the person evaluating the results of the test, six, the acceptance levels that the test must show, and seven, the materials and equipment to be used. So for NDE, this kind of lays out our, our roadmap of how we're going to do weld inspection and what steps we're going to follow. So like I said, uh, up top there it said a weld is not sound, the part is not good. We could see that from the ship. There's one weld that's bad on that ship that we saw it crack the ship in half and that ship is unusable until such time as repairs are made. In this presentation we will discuss the use of the main NDE methods. This includes penetrant, mag particle, radiographic, ultrasonic, eddy current, and some of the limitations of each. Before you begin any NDT of welds, you should make a visual inspection to detect any surface defects. This includes undercutting, porosity, weld spatter, arc strikes, cracks, and other obvious surface defects. Volumetric flaws fall into surface breaking, near surface, and internal. So if it's a surface breaking flaw, you can use visual or liquid penetrant to find it, or mag particle. If it's a near surface, um, flaw, you can use mag particle or eddy current to find it. And then if it's an internal flaw, ultrasonic testing and radiography are used to find the flaws. For planar flaws, if it's surface breaking, you use visual. Near surface, it's mag and eddy current, and internal, you use ultrasonic testing. You, the reason that you use, you can't use radiography for planar flaws is it won't pick it up. It'll just shoot right through it. It's like you're not going to find it. Volumetric flaws are be able to be found by radiography, but planar flaws are not. Here's a slide showing some people doing various types of non-destructive testing just to give you a little idea of what you could be in store for as a weld inspector kinds of things you might run across. Non-destructive examination, flaws. So for non-destructive examination of welds, well and of 
materials in general, we need to know what we're looking for. So we should have a baseline of terms that we're going to use to describe uh, flaws. So you can see the, the volumetric flaws, porosity, inclusions, this includes slag and tungsten, shrinkage, holes and voids, corrosion, thinning and loss, and pitting. Um, planar flaws are seams, laminations, lack of bonding, forging and rolling lap, fatigue cracks, stress corrosion cracks, incomplete fusion, and incomplete penetration. So these words, you don't need to memorize them right now, but you should have a general idea when somebody is talking about the various types of flaws. These words should be in your vernacular so you can have a somewhat intelligent conversation with the other person and not be involved in a what's on first, who's on second kind of situation. In addition to the other types of flaws, there's dimensional defects. And here's a list of dimensional defects and the methods used to find them. Dimensional defects though are visual inspection using mechanical gauges for most of them. You're going to run across warpage, incorrect joint penetration, preparation, incorrect weld size, incorrect weld profile, incorrect final dimensions. You might recognize a couple of these structural discontinuities from a slide a couple of slides ago. Um, we've got porosity, slag inclusions, incomplete fusion, inadequate joint penetration, undercut cracks, and surface issues. You know, these can be found with radiographic and visual inspection, and the surface problems can be found with visual testing. In this module, we covered the introduction into inspection, dimensional defects, structural discontinuities, and non-destructive examination.